in the last video, you may have looked over and said, well, that looks like a pretty simple process to uh, complete a nice finish. And it is, for the most part. But there's a couple converging factors which are critical to getting to that point. And so the first is that this actually has to be jointed flat and thickness planed accurately before you make the cabinet, which is what it is in this case. If you're working from flat stock, which is how I normally do this, uh, <clears throat> you're going to want to join and plane. If you're just putting it through a thickness planer and not joining, you're going to have a long hill to climb to be able to to make a flat panel that, or to make an even finish on your flat panel. Um, so it's key to have the panel flat so that you can take those strokes one after the next in order to make an even surface finish. If the panel's not flat, you're, you're going to have a hard time uh, making that because you're going to have a lot of starts and stops, which when you put a finish on top of the plain finish, it looks pretty awful if there are starts and stops, so you're going to go back to your sander straight away. Uh, <clears throat> next thing is you have to be able to sharpen the blade accurately. See how flat that back is? You can see my reflection in it over top of the camera. That is how flat the back needs to be. Um, when you sharpen, you have to remove the wear bevel. Absolutely critical. Then when I set this, I'm setting the chip breaker. When I set this, a little easier to do without having the camera in front. I'm going to set this fairly tight. You can probably see the amount of camber I have in my blade here. Now you might wonder why you need to sit so tight and the purpose for this is that we're finished planing and so we're going to take a really light shaving and the chip breaker has to work against this light shaving so it has to be sufficiently tight. Now I'm going to set the uh, blade back into my plane. You might even be asking yourself why aren't you using Japanese planes? And uh, I had an inquiry from somebody who I don't believe uses Japanese planes, and I want to show that you can do this with any type of plane. When I set my blades, I look at I look down the uh, sole like this to spot the uh, the blade protrusion. I'm not going to set it with the camera in between just because it's actually pretty hard to do, and so I'll show you when it's finished. Now I'm going to start with an exceptionally light cut, but the blade is going to look all said and done. It's going to look a lot like, there we go. It's not going to focus on, it's just going to focus on the sole, so. What you're looking at is the crowned surface of the blade just barely protruding through the mouth. I always set it by looking down the plane sole rather than, than doing any of these gimmicky things like running it down an edge. Because you can plainly see exactly what you're aiming for rather than having a guess. So you'll see I start with a very light cut because this is a finished panel and I don't want to start with a real aggressive cut because if you do start with a real aggressive cut and make some rough cut out, then you gotta fix it. So, see how that shaving is going up and over the blade like that? That means that the chip breaker is working. And so we're gonna start on the edge and just work slowly taking even passes, starting on the skew, I 
take the skew for the whole cut, actually. I like to clear my shavings pretty regularly just so I can see what I'm doing. Now these passes with this nice sharp blade and a properly set chip breaker. You can see when I go over that end grain, it's a little harder to cut. These passes are going to be producing a real nice polished looking surface. Where the only dull areas are going to be any remaining tear out from previous passes, which in my case shouldn't be there. But if you're working for a panel, working on a panel, and you see those dull areas, good chance that they're tear out and or end grain. End grain, as it protrudes through a panel, doesn't really shine like flat surfaces will. I can see a little bit of an area right there. So, don't be completely discouraged when you do put your finish on it. It still won't be as shiny, but it'll be obvious as to why. But it will be, it'll shine up with a, with a shellac or whatever finish you use. Now these nice light overlapping passes should be making the surface without grooves that are going to be capable of being felt, let alone seen. If you are still making grooves, you need to increase the amount of camber in your blade. Just knocking the ears off is not really enough to make a panel that feels flat without without any kind of grooves. So I can feel very slight. This is it's scalloped like this, so I can feel very slight highs. And uh, if they bother me, I'll go over the highs. So you can kind of see them as they're usually shinier. It's, it's almost imperceivable, but the trained fingers can feel it. So you can see it can be done with a metal plane, can be done with a wooden plane, can be done with a Japanese plane, especially with a Japanese plane. If those converging factors are met. If you're working with a metal plane, what you want to do after the fact is just take a handful of shavings and burnish the surface. passes, I'm going to want to run my chamfers one more time. I can run over the edge because I already took care of the chamfers on the edge. I'm going to run my radiuses one more time. Ball up some shavings, wear the dust. There we
can see that nice light glow, nice and perfect. You can see in the background here my chisels and the surface reflecting the chisels. <laughs>